now Come with me now Hi, uh, welcome to 4x4 Spotter, and sorry it hasn't been a, it's been a while, but it's Kenya, bad Wi-Fi, live with it. Um, so today in our episode we're doing 110 TDCI. Well, most people think it's a 110, but actually from 2007 upwards, it's a TDCI 110. So it doesn't matter. Pros and cons of the Defender 110 TDCI. First, pros and cons. Henry, you can start. Uh, it's 15, 15 foot and, si and 2 inches long and 6 foot and 7.5 inches tall, so it is too tall for most multi-stories and too long for parking bays. However, it's much better of going off-road and down country lanes than its Japanese, German or American rivals. But the back has little leg room, which is a down for, mo for most people like my brother because he's very tall. Yeah, uh, way too tall for the back. Um, well, uh, there's the most people hate it. There's no arm room uh, where that is on the sides, and I'll explain that later on why the car's been stopped being produced after 2015, and it's quite old-fashioned. It's still wind down windows, and but it's kiss. Keep it simple, stupid. That's what the army want. That's why it went to supply for the army. But sadly. They've been sold off to many places like Kenyan Army, Kenyan Police, other forces, collectors, etc. So, yep. The engine. This engine is borrowed from the Ford Transit van, a four cylinder with a 82 miles per hour limited. You don't want to go too fast off road, do you? And uh, it has a 0 to 60 miles per hour at a leisurely 14.7 seconds, which isn't impressive, is it? I'm just going to talk about Defender now, how it's it's been in production for over 60 years now, and it's stopping this year, it's December 2015, because it's failed the side impact test, impact test and because it's got really thin thin doors, and, and we'll just show you the Discovery 4 how the changes have been and this has big really really big like wide <coughs> doors um so if you somebody came in you would get you wouldn't get injured and in that it might be good straight through so yeah we're now going to talk about the history of land rover land rover was first innovator was morris wilkes and he, at the time it was all jeeps and he decided to make his own. So he drew a picture of a Land Rover in the sand and used parts from jeeps and because it had just been the war it was all made out of aluminium so the outside wouldn't rust which is why they're still here but the chassis are really rusty nowadays unless you're somewhere in Kenya where it's dry and they're everywhere. They don't get rusty. It's amazing. Isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. And, and so, they're battered. They're, oh, completely, they're battered. completely battered and smashed. So now, Still carrying on, it was big. The company got better and better and better, better off road, got them well known. And then they joined Jaguar, bought, bought them. And then they combined, State Land Rover and Jaguar. And now they're bought, both bought by General Motors in America. That's why they get, A, they're getting rid of. The Defender, which the British love, but and then they're making a more American SUV. And if you have you search if you search it up, DC 100. I'm not a fan of it, but let's see what it's like when it comes out. But it's built for the American market, incredibly wide. Don't think it'll do well out here for farmers. Well, not in out here in England, <laughs> of course. And uh, yeah, that was. This is the end of our episode for the 110. The truly historic car which, when first unleashed, it explored a quarter of the world and was a quarter of the pop world's population's first car they ever saw. So, Land Rover's got a lot of history and it's sad that they're going and this might be our tribute but we might make our own tribute version for Sega Bites Defender in 2015 December. Sadly, 
I'm not looking forward to that December. Right, thanks guys. Keep on watching 4x4 Spotter. Just comment on what stuff you want to see. Bye. Bye. Bye.